saints, friends, and visitors. Oh, yes. Welcome to our Wednesday online Bible study, The Rose of Sharon Ministries. Sit back, relax. We're going to have a good time studying the Word of God. Yes, we With are. Pastor Billy Washington of The Rose of Sharon Ministries. And we come on every Wednesday at 7. So get ready, saints, friends, and visitors. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. If you would like, leave a comment. Leave us a word. Come on, talk to us now, uh, audience. You know, we don't mind you giving us words of encouragement, even some constructive criticism if needed, but we're in for a treat. Yes, we would love to hear from you. So jot down right there in that box. Comments. Yes, yes. <laughs> Before we get started, let us pray. Pastor Billy Washington would lead us in a word of prayer before our Bible study. Pastor? Lord, in the name of Jesus, our prayer this evening is just this simple. We're asking for you to do us like you did the prophet Jeremiah. Yes, Jesus. He got so discouraged that he said, I'm going to quit preaching. My God. Because every time I would do good, evil is present with me. Oh, Jesus. But then, all of a sudden, he said, but the word of God was burning in oh, my heart. Yes, burning. Just like fire, fire shut up in oh, my bones. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, oh, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. Oh, yes, Father. Lord, we're asking you to, to ignite. Ignite us. Our audience. Yes, sir. Let their hearts burn within as we speak to them, by the way. Not mm -hmm. because we are great and articulate or anything of that nature, yes. but because your word is powerful and sharper oh, than any yes, two edged Jesus. sword. Send your word. Speak, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Washington, for that wonderful, wonderful prayer. This is the Rose of Sharon Ministries teachers, Pastor Billy and Lady Joanne Washington. And we are pastors of the roles of sharing ministries. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about today hearing God. All How right. many of you out there want to hear God? But our topic on today is saints, friends, and visitors, yes. are you ready? Our topic for today is, is God ever silent? Now that's a great question. Is God ever silent? Now sub topic is the, the language, language of, of the spirit. spirit. Oh yes, oh yes. Now we did our research from Seeing the Voice of God. The book Seeing the Voice of God is authored by Laura Harris Smith. We strongly suggest that you get this book. And she's talking about communicating without speech. All right. We all know that it is possible mm -hmm. to communicate without words. Mm -hmm. Baseball players, they do it. Yes. Even when you play a game of charade, you do it. Even babies do it. All right. Have you heard of the lady called Helen Keller? All right. She did it. Also, here is point this out. Okay. Let me state that you do not need a dream our vision to believe the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. And you need the Bible to live each and every day. Yes. The Bible is the Word of God. Dreams and vision, you have to go to God and find out. God, what you're saying, you know. But it is very important for you to also read your Bible every day. Yes. Study the Word of God. Hebrews 4 and 12 say, For the Word of God is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And of the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So you read your Bible. You use the Bible. Yes. But also, we're going to talk about another aspect. How God speaks dreams and vision. Now, earlier I talked about Helen Keller. She was blind and deaf. Pastor Washington. Yes, she was. You want to tell the story how this young lady, although she was blind and deaf, she couldn't hear words, mm -hmm. but she wrote words. All right. Well, Helen Keller was born in 1880. All right. And she lived until 1968. Yes. Just before she turned two years old, 
she caught some kind of disease. Uh -huh. I don't know what it could have been. I don't know what it was. But she ended up at about 19 months old. Only 19 months old. Yes. She went deaf and she became blind. Yes. Therefore, she's... Can you think of a little girl that's deaf and blind, which means you can't oh, hear God. and you can't see? Yes. That's a lonely life. Amen. And so the only way she was going to be able to get back into society, she was going to have to learn how to communicate with society that's right. and learn when society is communicating that's with her. That's right. That's right. Well, I don't have time to talk about her whole history, but make a long story short. God blessed her to get with a teacher by the name of Ann Sullivan. Yes. And at the age of six, Helen Keller spoke her first word, Ooh, which yeah. was water. Uh -huh. Now, before she spoke this word, she had learned how to spell out words yes. like the word doll, D-O-L-L. -L. Uh -huh. But she couldn't relate the object of a doll uh -huh. with the word doll. Yes. She just knew how to... Because you never saw a doll. Yes, Pastor, you're right. Yeah, things of that nature. Uh -huh. One day, that oh, teacher God. brought her outside and put one of her hands under a water pump and let the water run on her hand. Yes. And with the other hands, she showed her how the finger spelled the word water. And all of a sudden, the lights came on. Yes. She realized that the water that's touching her hand and the spelling, the finger spelling of the word water are two and the same. Yeah, P Pastor, although she was unable to see or sp speak, the other senses kicked in. Yes. And that senses was touch. Yes. Go ahead, Pastor. No, oh, oh, right, right. <laughs> touch, smell. Matter of fact, yes. when she participated in a play, she couldn't see the stage, so she would follow the scent of roses oh, just to make it to the stage. Yes. And so our point is this. You need to learn, and I need to learn, uh -huh. the language of the, spirit, of the Spirit because God speaks in more than one way. That's right. And if you're on FM and God's on AM, yes. you're on the wrong frequency. Amen. If you're trying to hear Him with your intellect yes. and He's speaking to your heart, Ooh, you're on God. the wrong frequency. Amen. If you're trying to hear Him from your heart or from your intellect and He's speaking through a famine, yes. you're on the wrong frequency. Yes. Yes. Frequency. Oh, yes, Pastor. God speaks through dreams. Amen. Yes. Vision. Yes. Visitations. Uh -huh. Prophetic utterances. Yes. And, and the list goes five on. five senses, which is sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. Oh, yes. Why should God be limited to using our ears to communicate with us? Why? You know, he's a great God. He can do everything in all things. Yes. Did he not give us other senses to experience him? Yes, God has given us five senses. All right. Why would God give us this and not want us to use them to speak to us through them? Yes. God created it all and all that he created is for us to have fellowship with him. So he wants to we talk. Got an awesome God, he wants to talk to us intimately, uh -huh. but he uses more than one language. And if I'm hung up on one way of hearing God, I'm going to miss him most of the time because he's a multifaceted speaker. Hey Amen. And then my topic is: Is God ever silent? All right. So let's start with the Bible. Has there ever been a time in the Bible that God was silent? And you know, they talked about the 400 year of silence. Okay. Pastor, you want to talk about that? Well, the book of Malachi mm -hmm. was the last book written in the Old Testament. And between the book of Malachi and the book of Matthew, That's right. which is the first book, you know, so to speak, written in the New Testament, there's a 400 years of of silence where some people say God went 400 years without speaking yeah, to Yeah, that's what they say. Uh -huh. Humanity. Uh -huh. Now let me that lady Washington tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> Although there were, it was 400 years of silence that took place between Malachi, the very last of the Old Testament prophets, mm -hmm. and Jesus' birth, both Jews and Christians both and other groups view this period as one in which the prophets were silent nationally. Okay, they didn't speak to the yeah, nations. they didn't speak to the nations. Okay. But not at the time when God himself was silent. Okay. See, God wasn't si silent at that time because you found out in Luke 2 and 36 mentions the prophet Tis 
Anna. So did not speak scripture during this time, but he spoke individually and congregationally. So let me see if I understand what you're saying. Are we saying that God was silent for 400 years or not? No, he was not. Okay, so in other words, he did not speak through a prophet yeah, to, the, to nations. the nations. That's like correct. Elijah stood up on Mount Carmel yes. and he said to everybody, How long? Halt ye between two opinions. If God be God, serve him. But if Baal be God, serve him. He didn't speak for 400 years to prophets, but he, but he to spoke individuals. Yeah. to individuals. That's right. So the bottom line is, he's always speaking, yes. but are we always listening? Or perceiving what he's saying. Thank you, thank you, thank Amen. you. Amen. Luke 2, 36 and 38. This and is there that. was one Anna, a prophetess. Okay, okay. The daughter of Phanelio. Of the tribe of Esther. Mm -hmm. She was one of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow about four or and four years. Okay. Which departed not from the temple. She stayed in the temple doing the work of the Lord, mm -hmm. but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise. And to the Lord, yes. and spake of him to all them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. So say that to me in English. Oh, what happened? She told people about God. Okay. That's what she did. She said that, he's, temple, that yeah. he's soon to come, yes. and God had given her a word of prophecy, and though, as though he, she was going to be alive when he came. Mm -hmm. And she lived to see the Lord Jesus. Recognized him as a baby, oh, yeah. as the king of kings yeah. and the lord of lords. So I guess our point is God was speaking to people all the time. Yeah. He just wasn't speaking nationally through some great uh, prophet. In, yeah, yeah, great prophet. Okay. All right. Now how about this other individual lady? We'll talk about that pastor, Simeon. Okay, there's a man by the name of Simeon. Uh, this is the book of St. Luke. I uh -huh. guess it's the second chapter. Yes, it is. Verses pastor. 25 uh -huh. through 34. Yes, sir. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting on the consolation of Israel. Uh -huh. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. He was upon him, not in him, but upon him. Okay. Okay. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost yeah. that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So God was talking to Simeon during that time. All right. And he let him know that he wasn't going to die until he see the Lord Christ. Okay. Verse 34, and Simeon, when he saw Jesus, the baby now, uh -huh. just they take him into the temple just to get him circumcised. When Simeon blessed them, he said unto Mary, his mother, behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. All right. He went on to tell Mary, the sign is going to be, you're going to watch your baby get stuck in the side with a sword. The, the Roman soldier stuck him in the side with a sword and blood and water came out. Mm. That happened at his death. But, the, but Simeon prophesied it. Why? The point is, because God is always speaking. Oh, yes. If God was speaking in the Bible, mm -hmm. Although they said that 400 years of silence, it really was not. Because he was speaking to the prophetess and the prophets mm -hmm. during that time individually. Okay. Okay, may not have been speaking scripture or nationally. But now, let's talk about another avenue. Now, if God speaks to us during the day, mm -hmm. then of course he wants to speak with you at night. We all sleep, Pastor. Okay. We all dream. Mm -hmm. Science Prove this. Okay. Now, Psalms 121 and 3, let me read that for you. Psalms 121 and 3 and 4 says, He would not suffer thy foot to be moved. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth thee would not slumber. This is talking about our Father. Okay. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Okay. Okay. We have a body. And a mind, and both slow down at night and yes, rest. Yes, you're right, lady. And we need it, <laughs> but we also have a spirit, and it never saints, never sleeps. It is the part of us that is like Jesus, the one okay. who will never slumber. Okay, our spirit is awake all night, longing 
to be with God and to convene with Him. My goodness. Now, Songs of Solomon 5 and 2 reads what, Pastor? Okay, now this is a picture of how our spirit stays up at night longing to commune with God, yes. although our bodies and our minds are resting. The book of the Song of Solomon, the fifth chapter, I'm just going to begin at verse 2, but I'll probably read verse 2 and 3. Okay. Here's what it says. I sleep, mm -hmm. but my heart waketh. Oh, yeah. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open unto me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew, and my locks within the drops of the night. Yes. That's love talk, okay? Mm -hmm. This is a love book. Yes. But the first two is what we're looking at. I sleep, mm -hmm. but my heart waketh. Oh, yeah. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying. So God wants to come to you Ooh, in yes your sleep. Uh -huh. Knock on the doors of your heart yes. and speak to you. And if you think about it, Lady Washington, it makes sense. Yeah. The average in a lifetime, we get eight hours sleep yeah, per night. Now, now we know that in some stages we don't sleep for four hours a day, uh -huh. but then babies, if you add it all up, we should get about eight hours sleep uh -huh. per night in a lifetime. Yes. Well, if that's the case, if you're 60 years old and you do the math, if you're 60, that means you've been sleep 20 years out of the 60. Yes. I don't know if I lost you on that. Yeah, I understand. You're 24 well, I wouldn't hours in a day. Speak you then. Yeah. You know, you spend more time resting. Yeah. Yeah, you're 24 hours in a day. Yeah. And if you sleep eight hours a day, that's a third of the time you asleep. Now, we do know that the devil will visit us in our sleep. Amen. If you ever had a nightmare. Amen. Okay, well, then if the devil has the power to visit yes. you in your sleep, yes. don't you think God <laughs> would have the power Amen. to do it? Amen. And has a desire on top of that. Let me be quiet and let this wonderful lady read the scripture to us. Go ahead, lady. Okay, let me say this. Nighttime is God's idea. Mm -hmm. It belongs to him. Mm -hmm. Now, Job, the 33rd chapter, Pastor. All right. I want you to talk about that. I'm going to let you go ahead and get it together. All right. We see here that God does speak through dreams and visions. Okay. But many of us do not perceive it. And I'm going to tell you what the word perceive is. Then Pastor going to read. A scripture that backs up her definition of perceive and how God intervenes when we do not perceive. Just going to compliment what you say by reading the scripture behind it. Take your time, Lady Washington. Tell us about the yeah. word perceive. Perceive okay. is a verb which means discern, appreciate, okay. consider, realize, become aware of. Okay. This is what we don't understand or do. Do not we don't perceive okay. when God is speaking to us. We cannot distinguish, we don't see it, we can't grasp it, okay. understand, take in, find, comprehend it, regard it, view it, or figure out. That reminds me on the day that Jesus Christ was risen from the <laughs> dead. Mm -hmm. There were two men he met on the road of Emmaus. Yes, Pastor. They could not perceive that the Lord Jesus was walking with them yes. and talking with them oh, yeah. right then and there. Yes. They couldn't grasp it. They couldn't oh, realize it. They couldn't distinguish it. They couldn't right. understand it. Uh -huh. they, it was hard to comprehend. Oh, yes. And just as they realized it was Jesus, yeah, he, was he vanished out of their sight. <laughs> yeah. You see, the cares of life can oh, yeah. burden us down that we do not perceive that God is with us yes. all the time. Yes. Because we're up, working hard weary, tired, uh -huh. frustrated, trying to figure out and things of that nature. But thank God for Jesus. Let's see what God does for a person like oh, that yes. in his sleep. Amen. Job the 33rd chapter, uh -huh. beginning at verse 14. Here we go. For God speaketh once, <laughs> yea, twice, mm -hmm. yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep fall upon oh, men and yes, yes. slumbering upon the bed, yes. then he opened, then he who? Then God, God opens yes, he does. the ears of men yes. and sealeth their instructions oh, yes. that he may withdraw from man his purpose and hide his pride oh, yes. from him. Yes. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life 
from perishing by the sword. Well, yeah. So God loves us so much that when we are too hard-headed or too busy to listen or too stubborn to listen, he can wait till we go to sleep and then he'll speak to our hearts because now that pride that's in our mind and in our flesh is resting. But our hearts that have been converted is longing to hear what God has to say. And then he gives, seals our instructions, Lady Washington. Mm -hmm. And this is why for the next few weeks we're going to be talking about the language of the Spirit. Is he speaking through a dream? Okay. Is he speaking through a coincidence, yeah. circumstances, uh -huh. visions? The Bible said young men shall see visions. Oh, yeah. And old men shall dream dreams. Oh, yeah. Is he speaking by your mother? Yeah. Or by your father? Or by your sister? Or by your brother? Or by your child? Yeah. Is he speaking through somebody that you despise? Through your oh, friend? God. Could he be speaking through your enemy? Yes. Oh, we're in for our teaching. Oh, yes, we are. I'm Pastor. hoping and praying that the Lord will give us strength, the mind, to follow this teaching because God has a word for his people in these last and evil days yes, he does. concerning the language oh, the of spirit. the Spirit. Lady Washington, you're doing a good job. I appreciate you. You want to go a little further down this lesson? Sometimes God want to give us instructions. But he can't give it to us during the day because we're so busy. Yes. We're so busy doing other chores and other things in our job that we cannot hear God then. But when you're in your bed at night, yes, God can speak. And he can seal it once he's speaking. Well, the book of Job just said that. And so when we go to bed tonight, we may ought to consider asking God to touch us in our sleep. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And speak to our hearts and our sleep. Now, let's talk about it. Is God ever silent? Let's go to 1 Samuel, the 28th chapter. Okay. Let's read the 6th verse, then 8 through the 15 verses. This is getting good, saints. All right. Let me just read 1 Samuel 28 and 6. Okay. And when Saul inquired of the Lord... The Lord answered him not. Okay. Neither by dreams. Uh oh. <laughs> nor by Urim, mm -hmm. nor by prophets. Okay, so he was he was even listening to God to speak to him even in his dreams, but this time God is not speaking to him even in his dreams. Now we're not gonna contradict ourselves, but That's we're right. gonna let you know. That although God is always speaking, uh -huh. when you get into sin, yes, talk you, to you cause him to hide his voice talk from you because you cannot discern you can't hear God. Yeah, if you what's going sin. on. Isaiah <laughs> said in the 59th chapter of Isaiah, Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that he can't save, nor his ear heavy that he can't hear, but your iniquity. Yes, that's it. Has separated, separated you between you and your God, your and your sins yes. has hid His face. Yes. So God is always speaking, but uh -huh. when you get in sin, talk to us. You get confused. Talk to us. That's it, Pastor. And Saul was, was afraid confused. Was and confused. confused. Yes, he was because he didn't know how God was going to speak to him or how God was speaking. Because so, sin has separated him from God. Yes, so he took matters into his own hands. And if I be quiet, this Lord, lovely lady good, is going to read to us, what did Saul do? Yes, first, we must understand the reason why God did not speak to Saul is because of sin. Okay. That's why he was silent. Okay. Now, to go, we're going to go to verse number 8. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, mm -hmm. and he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. All right. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall now name unto thee. And this is what we do sometimes when we get away from the Lord. We, we want go to, to see others. We want to go to the psychic networks. Yes, we want to go to the prophet, the prophetess. We want to go to somebody when God is not speaking. And sometimes we get desperate. We'll go to the psychic yes, network. Yes, that's right, Pastor. And, you know, go where they may have a uh, crystal ball or yes, things of that nature. Yes. And we're not putting any of them down. The spirits. Uh -huh. We're just saying that we need to seek God according to the word of God. Yes. Because Satan also is a deceiver. And we can sometimes get information, but it's not revelation. Oh, yes. Because he, the word you just read he sought for 
a woman. He went for a woman that could get in touch with familiar, familiar spirits. spirits. That's right. Familiar spirits are demonic spirits that know all about you, your grandmother, and things of that nature. And this is where you have generational curses and things yes. of that nature because the devil knows how to trick us. Yeah, because Saul outside said, of the word of well, God. if God's not going to speak, I'm going to find somebody going to speak. Yes. Verse and 9, lady, this watch woman. Okay. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest that Saul have done, how he had cut off those that have familiar spirit mm -hmm. and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. See, she, she, was thought, he got, she thought he was going to come get him, come kill her. Yeah, she was talking to Saul yeah. and didn't even know it was Saul. Uh -huh. And so she was saying, now listen, we can't do that because the king has forbidden us to have this practice. He's killing us on sight. Uh -huh. The familiar spirit, the wizards, those people. He oh, got yes. rid of them out mm -hmm. of the land. Okay, and as we go to verse 10 through 12, Lady Washington, would you read some more? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. In other words, give me my request. Nothing going to happen to you. All right. Verse 11, Then said the woman, Whom should I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. Samuel. In other words, Saul was telling the woman, She said, Who do you want me to bring up for you? said, bring me up Samuel. And if you know who Samuel was, Samuel was a man of God. He was a priest. A prophet and a priest, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. She brought him up. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Now let me be clear. That was she found out he was Saul. They're having a seance. <laughs> yes, they are. And they are calling up the dead. Yes. Now, God forbids that we do that because the dead does not come back and speak to us. Yeah. But now, familiar spirits know about our dead uh, forefathers, yeah. grandmothers, yeah. things. Yeah. Wow. So they will come disguised as one of them and trick us. Yes, but God. this time, the woman hollered out because she realized that's not a familiar spirit. That, was the real that is the deal. real McCoy. That's the real deal. And this is why she hollered out. God did it this time and let yes. Samuel come back and talk. Now, I'm over talking my wife, lady, read no, a little further. Good, Pastor. You're talking good. And the king said, that's when she found out it was Saul she was talking to. Okay. Let me say that. Mm -hmm. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid for what sawest thou. And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God's ascending out of the earth. Okay. My God. Oh, yes. She could see, Pastor. Yeah, she could see into mm -hmm. paradise. Yes. And she saw the souls that were in paradise that Jesus had not come and gotten out yet because this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, so when God. she says she saw gods, oh, yeah. the Bible says in the book of Psalms that ye are gods, which yes. means we're made in the image of God. We're the little gods. Yes. And he's the only wise God, our Savior. But because we're made in his image, we are gods. And that's in Psalm, I believe, 84. But we'll tell you about it later. Okay, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, What form is he of? Mm -hmm. And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. My God. And he stooped with his face to the ground mm -hmm. and bowed himself. All right. Verse 15. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me yes. to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me. See, that's what we said earlier. Okay. When you have sin in your life, okay. God would not speak to you. He's okay. just saying, God has departed from me. Okay, so he's never silent, mm -hmm. but he will stop speaking to me. If I get into my sins, yes. then he, he that will separate him and I, my communication That's with right. him. Because he cannot have fellowship with ungodliness. And let me say what Saul said again. He said, God has departed from me and answered me no more. Okay. Neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called thee 
that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Not only was he not speaking to him in the daytime, but he wasn't speaking to him at night in his dreams. And you see the relationship. The he wouldn't even give the prophets nothing to give to Saul. The no relationship Saul. between Samuel and Saul was when Samuel wanted to hear from God, he would go to Saul, the prophet. Matter of fact, Samuel is the one that anointed Saul king of Israel. Uh -huh. That same Samuel is the one that informed Saul that God has rejected him because he oh, continued yes. to walk in sin and has chosen somebody better than him. Mm -hmm. So now Saul is in trouble and oh, he can't yes. hear from God. Yes, now we're getting God. ready to bring this lesson to a close and I want you to know the reason behind the teaching. Mm -hmm. There comes a time in your life, oh, yes, Mr. and Mrs. Uh -huh. There comes a time in your life, teenager, uh -huh. that it's a matter of life and death. You must hear from God. Oh, you must. Because if you don't hear from God in some instances, you don't know what to do and you can be depressed, suicidal, yes. or whatever. Yes. So the whole lesson is going to be for the next few weeks hearing the voice of God yes. in his multifaceted ways of speaking to us. Sometimes through dreams, visions, yes. visitations, which means it can be angelic visitations. Uh -huh. It can be through uh, circumstances such as plagues. Then you're going kind of too fast. Let me let me show them what what you're talking about, though. Okay. Let, let me show what the pastor's talking about. The language of the Spirit okay, is yeah. God ever silent. Hearing from the voice of God, we say he can speak to us through one now, pastor. Plagues, famines, dreams. Visions and visitations. Okay. And for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about plagues and famines, and probably mostly we're going to be talking about dreams and things of that nature, and visions and things of that nature. But we're in for a treat, and we want you to stay with us these next few weeks as the Lord and pray for us that the word of the Lord will have its free course. Now, lady, you might want to help us close out some few last little words you'd like to say. You know. Yeah, Pastor, I think this is very important to let them know. That in your dreams at night, mm -hmm. God, He will speak. Okay. He can speak. If you live in right, doing the will of God, He will speak to you. All right. But if there's sin in the camp, if there's sin there, don't even look for Him to speak. Because all He want to do is get you back in fellowship with Him. Okay. Now, God speaks through plagues, Pastor said, okay. and famines. Plagues might, would be diseases. You might wonder why this thing has happened to this world, mm -hmm. this COVID-19. All right. Why is this happening? God is speaking, saints and friends. Okay. You might say, late at night, I've been dreaming. Okay. God is speaking to you, woman, man, or child. All right. You might say, why am I seeing things? It seems like I'm having a deja vu, Pastor. Thank you. Deja vu. You're having visions. God speaks to vision. Yeah. And visitation, for God speaks once, yes, twice. He's trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm. And he's speaking through visiting with you. But this is very important, Saint. You need to know how do God speak? What is his language? Is he ever silent? And we've said, no, he's never silent. You need to know how is God speaking to you now? Yes. In this season, mm -hmm. at this time mm -hmm. in your life. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. May God bless you on this evening. We appreciate you being with us. This is, we're trying to set a foundation for where we're going. Now, again, we're asking you to consider getting the book. We bought them for our members, uh, Rose Sheridan members, concerning hearing the voice of God because we're going to be talking about dreams, visions, and visitations. And don't forget, Pastor, and we're talking about communicating without words. Yes, yes. And so the book of Hebrews, the fifth chapter, talks about we need to have our senses sharpened and exercised that we may discern good from evil. And so sometimes if God is not using words, you need, you can interpret the voice of God through what you see. Yes, uh, yes. And Daniel went to sleep yes. and he saw a lion, mm -hmm. a bear, a leopard, and a three-headed 
Munster, yeah. where the lion was King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. Yeah. The bear was King Cyrus in Persia. Mm -hmm. The leopard was Alexander the Great. And the three-headed monster was the Roman Empire. They had monsters ruling. Oh, yes. They called themselves emperors. Mm -hmm. The Emperor Nero killed his own mother. The list goes on. In other words, what do you see? Yes. What do you see? So we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And remember, God speak to us through those five senses now. Yes. And we're going to have scripture showing you how he speaks through the voice, uh, your hearing, your seeing, your touch, even your smell. Yes. That has to do with discerning. You ever heard somebody say, <clears throat> I smell a rat. <laughs> well, they're not talking about they smell, you know, a rodent or anything. They say, and they may say, you know, something's fishy. Yeah. That's discernment. Mm -hmm. So God is going to talk to us these next few weeks. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. And this is only the overview. We're going to go deeper, deeper into the word. We're going to tell you through the Bible how God speaks through plagues and famines. And the difference between uh, encouraging dreams and waking dreams and warning dreams and directional dreams and instructional dreams and teaching dreams and apocalyptic dreams and the list goes on. So stay tuned and stay with us. This is only the beginning because you need to know if God is ever silent. And also the language of the spirit. Thank you, Pastor Washington. This is just an opening of our Bible study, and we're going to go deeper next week. Next week, we're going to talk about the plagues and the famines. Okay. okay? Yes. Okay, before we stop our Bible study, first, let me give you the invitation of salvation. In order to be saved, you must repent. Confess, believe, connect, and pursue. You can read these scriptures later. And we're going to ask Pastor Washington to pray with us the prayer of salvation. Lord, in the name of Jesus, repentance simply means to change my mind. Yes, so God, I don't look to myself to be good enough to be saved. Oh, yes, but I look through the death the burial in Jesus Christ as my substitutionary death. And I want to thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for sending your only begotten Son yes, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. We thank you for sending your word today. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Unity in the gospel. We have the roles of sharing ministries, repair of the breach worldwide ministries, and we have Praise Center Community Church. Roles of Sharing Ministry, pastored by Billy and Lady Joe and Washington. And we are the Bible study teachers every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Also, the Repair of the Breach Worldwide Ministry is pastored by Pastor Ronald and Lady Sanithia Walker, raising up the foundation of many generations and restoring the streets. And they are good with the outreach for assistance or prayer, yes, give them are. a call. Yes, they are. And we have the Praise Center Community Church, which is our bishop and our co-pastor. Co-pastor Dr. Yolanda Butler and Bishop Donald H. Butler. They are our bishop. They call to train, to equip, approve, and mentor the body of Christ, where we learn, grow, go, and do the work. We thank God for them and God for them because they are teachers of God's word. Oh, yes. And we need the word of God in this season. So we thank God for you visiting with us. And come back next Wednesday and we're going to dig a little deeper oh, yes. into hearing the voice of God. And also, is God ever silent? And also, the language of the Spirit. Yes. We in for a treat. You are in for a treat. I dare you to come back and stay with this lesson. And you're going to see, and your eyes are going to be open. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pastor Washington, you want to say bye-bye to our listening audience? Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
And we're excited. We're asking you to remember us in your prayers that the word of the Lord will continue to have its free course until we meet again. Bye-bye.